Welcome to Stormworks. I'm going to teach you how to put together a flying fortress. I'm not going to show you a cool flying fortress because that's not what this is about. All you're going to see is this engine frame because I want to teach you how to put together an engine frame for a flying fortress. It's much easier than you might think, so I'll just walk you through it and then you can build your own flying fortress. Oh, it looks like I've set some cargo containers on fire. Always nice to see. I'm not sure when I did that. Um, oh well. So as you can see, it handles just like a normal heavy helicopter. Uh, there's nothing particularly amazing about it, but that's fine. It's a flying fortress. The fact that it handles this easily uh, is what you'd like. You want this to handle this easily. And look, we can blockade our, uh, uh, our railway. No one's getting in or out while we're blockading it. Boom. Bow. Like that, right? So how do you put together this kind of engine frame? Well, obviously, you use four towers of rotors, one in each corner, and you use a tail setup. Let's talk about how to set this up. You're going to need torque, a lot of torque. I'm using the clutch flutter glitch to get as much torque as I need. If you're going to get this through normal means, I recommend jet engines because the medium uh, jet engine turbine, this one, this one here, uh, outputs mechanical um, torque. So you can just use that to spin up your engines. Uh, and also the jet engines run at roughly the right rotations per second. So double win. You don't even need a gearbox. But you do need enough torque to spin these things up because the whole point is that we're going to spin these big heavy blades up. We're going to spin them all up to a constant speed. Uh, in this case, 100 rotations per second is the target. I generally go between 80 and 95, depending on exactly what's happening. Uh, you might find that that changes in the future. If your ship starts to seize, like shake and, and jitter, and it's not some random physics glitch, it's probably because you're trying to spin your rotors too fast. Just back down on the rotations per second, and you should find a happy, stable point. And just keep them spinning at that speed forever. But won't you fly into the sky? Well, that's the point here. These are all set to neutral blade pitch. Not positive. Neutral. So they won't lift you at all. No matter how fast you spin them, they won't lift you. They might, like, break, but they won't lift you. <laughs> so keep them spinning at a comfortable speed, and then what you do instead is you use this collective input. You set it to 1 to go up or negative 1 to go down, and this allows you to control your ship with a very constant power um, flow. There's no longer any trying desperately to spin up a big heavy stack to go up and then overshooting and then falling out of the sky because you spun them too far down. No, no. Don't worry about it. Use this collective blade pitch in order to, uh, to go up and down. The same is true of the tail. If you are trying to use that tail, uh, this, you don't have to. Uh, this is the same exact setup as this. It's just that this is named differently. It's just a neutral rotor. The yaw command for this tail is the exact same as the collective command for every other rotor. So just set your rotors to neutral, spin them up and keep them spinning, and then you can just use that collective input to make that yaw happen. Now in this case they are pointed in opposite directions, so we do have to split the yaw between them. We have to be, this one, this one is positive x and this one is negative x. Get used to inverting signals. Whether you use an inverter chip or a function chip, it's all good by me. Just be very comfortable with the idea that some signals will need to be inverted. So, how do we set this up uh, to actually get controlled? Over here, we've got our um, gyro. The gyro controller is the beating heart of any large aircraft like this. Uh, and you're going to want to turn auto hover on and just keep it on. Just eternally auto hover. There's no reason to not auto hover. Uh, and uh, I'll teach you some basic problems with that. But in a second, uh, I, I first want to cover some of these other outputs. You can see how pitch and stabilized up down go to every blade. Well, uh, this is the up down that I talk about the collective and then pitch is the pitch input, which tells the vehicle itself how far forward to pitch. Uh, but over here, we've got roll and roll is only going to half of the blades. Well, that's because the other half of the blades are covered by an inverted roll. As I said, get used to inverting signals because these are mirrored blades. You see how this right arrow here and then over here, it's a left arrow. See that? That's because I built them in mirrored mode. So I have to invert the roll in order to make the roll all go the same direction. 
It's not very complicated. You just have to know it exists. Uh, one of the other things you're going to want to do, obviously you send the yaw back to the tail, but one of the other things you're going to want to do is check out your settings in the gyro. Um, if your ship flies into the sky the instant you start it, rather than hovering, there are two possibilities. One possibility is you forgot to set your blade pitch to neutral, uh, set it to neutral. But if all your blades are set to neutral, the other possibility is that your max throttle is simply too high. Just keep lowering it until you find a max throttle that, uh, or until you find a happy neutral, because the ship thinks that halfway between min and max throttle is hover. So just keep lowering max throttle or raising min throttle until you have a hover that actually works as a hover rather than going off into the sky or sinking into the ocean. It's that simple. Just adjust them to be correct. And it's a uh, pretty loosey goosey. It's uh, it's capable of adjusting inside of itself fairly easily. Um, you just have to get in the ballpark. It's not it's not one of those things where you have to be absolutely perfect. There is one other complexity here in terms of signals, and that is uh, what up down actually does. You see, when we're trying to hover like this, it's quite easy. Look at how easily we're hovering. Pretty basic, right? But if we tip forward, our upwards vector is no longer up. It's now up and forwards. We're splitting our thrust between going up and going forwards, which means we are losing a lot of upwards force, which means you're going to sink into the ocean and die. Now, I also sink into the ocean and die, but that is not nearly as aggressive as it was before. So let me teach you just some basics on how to... Uh, um, set this up so it doesn't fall into the ocean and die. You can do this much more exactly by actually calculating out like sine functions and shit, but there's an easy way to do it. What you do is instead of sending your up down straight into your uh, into your gyro, you send it over into a function chip instead. So this function chip takes in the up down input from our seat, and then we add in something else. What else are we adding in? A tilt. See uh, this, this tilt meter here? This will tell us how pitched we are, forward or backwards. So what we do is we adjust our up-down based on how far forward we're pitched. If we're pitched forward or backwards by a significant margin, we give that throttle a goose. We make sure that it is trying to go up. It's telling the gyro, go up. Now, if you've ever controlled this before, you may have done that manually. Oh yeah, whenever you press W, you also press the up arrow to try and keep your, your altitude. It's the same thing, but automatic, and it allows you to also press up if you need even more altitude, right? So uh, inside this, it's just uh, X, which is the standard up-down command, plus Y times Y, which is the tilt meter times itself, and then a Z value. 200 is a good Z value usually, but I put it into a, uh, into a throttle. Um, now, you can get more accurate than this because it's really a sine function here. We're talking about uh, how tilted off of the Y axis um, we are at a given tilt, so you could, you know, figure that out by taking the sine, but you, then you have to convert this into, um, into radians and, eh, whatever. It's good enough at, as, as, as y times y times 200. That's good enough. <laughs> and then that becomes the signal that you send to the gyro. So all we're doing is we're artificially adding to our up-down command. We're artificially goosing our up-down command to, uh, to be stronger when we're tilted, just to, so we can actually hover correctly. Um, now, if you have some kind of hover command hold, like, uh, you know, oh, I've got a thing that's trying to stay at 100 meters above the ground exactly, you still need to do this, because otherwise you will sink below that target by quite a bit. And sure, eventually it will, it will um, you know, try and catch up, but by then you will be in much, much lower than you intended to be. Now, I'm just taking forward tilt into account because I almost never have any significant sideways tilt roll. I, I very rarely have much roll, so uh, I, I don't really worry about that. Just keep it simple. And that's really all you need, right? Well, let's go ahead and talk about some annoyances. One of the annoyances you're likely to run into is a, uh, a poor stance. It's going to be like uh, your ship is always going to be pitched forward or backwards all the time, and the gyro doesn't seem to be helping much. It keeps it from like crashing into the sea, but uh, you're constantly on a weird slope. Oh, that's so uncomfortable, and it means that you're constantly drifting. You want to be pretty flat, right? You don't, you don't want to tilt too much when you're just sitting here neutral. 
Well, that is obviously a function of your center of mass, this little pink ball. If you can't see the pink ball, turn it on. It's uh, here. Boop, 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 boop. Um, that'll tell you where your center of mass is. But your center of mass is likely to change as you develop the ship. So what are you going to do? Constantly change where your rotors are? Oh my gosh, that sounds like a pain in the butt to constantly cut and paste rotors as you, uh, as you develop the interior of your ship and add cargo holds and stuff. Oh, what a pain. Uh, no, no, you don't have to worry about that. Whatever side of your ship is heavier, whatever side of your ship lags behind, just add more blades. <laughs> so up here we've got four blades. And back here we've got five blades and that'll keep us neutral pitched and uh, you can just adjust that very very finely as you move through the rest of your setup and if you end up with a uh, you know back rotors that are you know an eight blade and then a six blade and then a six blade that's fine you don't have to keep everything constant you can shift things to perfectly suit your exact balance now you might be wondering whether or not it would be better to use the blade length as far as i can tell blade length does not affect the lift I think it only affects the roll and the pitch. Um, the blade number affects the lift. I think that was it, though. I think I think that's all you need to really get your uh, your 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 own flying fortress engine frame. Uh, do keep in mind that your center of mass is incredibly important if you are doing cargos cargo lifting. Uh, now, with something this size, maybe it's not that important. Something this size, uh, you'd have to have a heck of a cargo. Um, in order to really affect your center of mass. But normally speaking, you're going to want to put your cargo uh, lifter, your cargo um, connectors, directly along your center of mass so that your ship doesn't tilt when you're lifting heavy objects. Now, this engine room, this engine frame is available on the workshop. Feel free to, uh, to grab it for yourself if you just want one that works. But it might not work because they might fix the, the torque glitch that I'm using. The same stuff applies, though, even if it's uh, your own vehicles. You can see that I've got a bunch of, like, little outputs here just to tell you what's up. And, uh, you know, that's going to be uh, uh, enough for you to get started, I think. You should have no problem getting your Flying Fortress up and running with this kind of... Uh, approach. Have a good one.